Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, here's an audit sim on risks, controls, and audit procedures in the revenue cycle. We know that internal controls, if properly designed and implemented, could assist the auditor in preventing or detecting errors and fraud associated with the client's financial statements. So let's quickly review the revenue cycle since that's what this SIM is about. We'll start out with the documents. The first two documents in the revenue cycle, number one is the sales order form. It's prepared in the sales department and the customer order comes in and usually on the exam, your client extends credit to its customers, which means they ship out the goods prior to getting paid. So that involves the credit department serving as authorization if the customer has good credit. So this should be a control right here that a company has a credit department whose authorization is needed because if the customer is not on an approved list, or the customer doesn't have good credit, then this sales order should be shut down and goods should never be shipped unless the customer is paying in advance. So let's say the sales order has been approved by the credit department. What's the next step? Well, once the credit has been approved, then the warehouse in the company will pick the goods that were ordered and transfer them to the shipping department within the company. So what does shipping do? Do they just send them out at this point? No, not yet. Shipping should compare what was received from the warehouse, compare what the warehouse brought over just now to the sales order form received from the credit department and those quantities should match. So if the credit department indicates that 100 cases of Snapple were approved to be ordered by this customer, then that should match what the warehouse just sent over 100 cases. Shipping should not assume that the warehouse knows how to count. So shipping should recount what the warehouse just sent over and make sure that it matches what's on the approved sales order received from the credit department. This way we know that what was ordered and approved was just sent over from the warehouse. And if that all matches up, then the shipping department prepares the next document in the cycle, which is the bill of lading. The bill of lading, you've got to know, is prepared by the shipping department. Notice that the bill of lading is not prepared by the billings department, but the billings department does need a copy of the bill of lading. Just like the billings department needs a copy of the sales order form. So now the goods have been ordered, approved, and shipped out. What happens next? Well, now the billings department gets involved, the accounting department. They're going to compare the sales order that they received from the sales department to the bill of lading that they receive from the shipping department. If the information agrees, the billings department prepares the third document in the cycle known as the sales invoice and sends the sales invoice to the customer so that the company can get paid. So you're the accountant in the billings department, you pick up the sales order and it says 100 cases of Snapple were ordered and approved by credit. And then you pick up a copy of the bill of lading and it says 100 cases of Snapple were shipped to the customer. Everything matches up. So you in the billings department will prepare the sales invoice. Not the same as the sales order, right? The sales invoice is the third document in the cycle. And you'll send a copy to the customer because the company hasn't gotten paid yet. So the sales invoice goes out to the customer. And then the sale is recorded in the sales journal. And the accounts receivable ledger must be updated because the company needs to know specifically which customer owes money as a result of this order. So that's a little background review on the revenue cycle. Let's see what kind of questions they're going to ask and what kind of risks, controls, and order procedures we need to be aware of. So we're going to do this true or false style, and that will allow us to focus on one risk at a time. So number one, to minimize the risk associated with goods being released from the warehouse for unauthorized use, Approved sales invoices should be required for goods to be released from the warehouse. True or false? And that's false 
because to minimize the risk associated with goods being released from the warehouse for unauthorized use, approved sales orders, not sales invoices, should be required for goods to be released from the warehouse. Because the warehouse gets a copy of the sales order form. The warehouse doesn't even get a copy of the sales invoice. The sales invoice is created after the warehouse releases goods to the shipping department and after the goods are shipped out to the customer. So it's important to know the ordering of the documents within the cycle, that the sales order form is first, the bill of lading is second, and the sales invoice is third. Notice the only reason this question was wrong is because it says approved sales invoices should be required for goods to be released from the warehouse. That's false. It should be approved sales orders. And who should be approving the sales order? The credit department. And then once that sales order is approved, where does it go? To the warehouse. So the warehouse knows that it can release the goods to the shipping department. Without approved sales orders, then there is a risk that the warehouse would be releasing goods to the shipping department for unauthorized use. So for that reason, the warehouse should never release goods to the shipping department without an approved sales order. To minimize the risk of sales invoices being posted to incorrect customer accounts, monthly statements should be mailed to all customers with outstanding balances. True or false? So what's the risk? That the sales invoice is being posted to the wrong customer receivable account? Would it help to send monthly statements to all customers with outstanding balances? Yes, that's true. Because if monthly statements are mailed to all customers with outstanding balances, a customer who should not have an outstanding balance would notice an error and likely report it to the company and say, hey, you sent me a balance due, but I haven't made any purchases in a while. So the company should not only mail these statements to every customer that has an outstanding balance, but also analyze customer responses. So the answer is true. That would minimize the risk of sales invoices being posted to incorrect customer accounts because any errors made that's not in the customer's favor, they would report it promptly and that would help to detect this error and minimize this risk. What about number three? Auditors concerned that goods shipped to customers do not agree with goods ordered by customers. So maybe the auditor's concerned that 110 cases were shipped to the customer but they only ordered 100 cases. It says auditors should determine whether the billings department is comparing goods received from the warehouse with the approved sales order before shipping the goods. True or false? And if you think you know the answer, leave it for me in the comments section. And this is only question three of a 10 question sim, because this audit sim is taken right from the I-75 final review chapter. So if you need more help with the CPA audit exam, Go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark. So get on I-75 and be home soon.